I've covered the most well-known Linux hardware manufacturers, whether they're Tuxedo, Slimbook, System76. I reviewed a few devices from each, but there's another one that I had never heard about. And they make no-nonsense, robust laptops with core boot, easy to buy spare parts for seven years, three years of warranty, and they make very strong claims about their service. So I got one of their laptops to review. So we're gonna look at the company, what the promise is, how well this laptop is built as an example of what they can make, and also how well I can transition to this segue, to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, and you probably have heard about them by now, but if you haven't, just know that they're your all-in-one solution to build your own website, however complex or simple you want it to be. You can completely customize the website to look and feel and have the features that you want. You have a big selection of templates and then you can rearrange them by just dragging and dropping blocks into place. You can change the general colors, you can add new pages and you have a big library of modules like a complete online shop with online payment or a members only area, a video gallery. You can even pick your own domain name and book it from Squarespace and they even have a module to design your own logo. So if you need a website, but you don't really know how to get started or you don't have the time or the technical skills, just head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment or click the link in the description below and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So let's begin with the company itself, which is called Nova Custom. They're from the Netherlands and they're specialized in laptops. You will not find desktop PCs in there. They put the focus on customization of your laptop to your exact specifications. They ship Linux out of the box, but you can also put Windows in there if you want. And they use Core Boot to ensure there is no proprietary code running at startup without your knowledge. And they say they even ship Core Boot if you decide to go for a Windows and Linux dual boot, which is nice because Core Boot can be a pain to set up for dual boots. Now they offer three years of warranty, except the battery, which is only one year. And they guarantee spare parts availability for your device up to seven years after your purchase. They say warranty repairs are completed within five days after receiving the device and they do accept returns even though these are custom-made devices and they would not be obligated to. They will keep 3% of the device's cost though, which sounds reasonable. And of course, I can't test every single one of these claims because I only got a review device, I'm not a customer, and the review device is working really well. I did not have to send it over. But their website does display all these guarantees and a strong list of spare parts for every single one of their laptops, which you can order immediately online. They also say they offer free shipping for any order above 500 euros all across the globe, except in countries where it's apparently impossible, like India, French Polynesia or New Caledonia. They also pay for import costs. So you basically just pay for the laptop and nothing else, no hidden costs. And in terms of devices, their laptops do not have marketing names like most other manufacturers. They have series. The NJ series seems to be the entry-level Ultrabook with integrated GPUs and optical disc readers. Yeah, you heard me right. They actually ship laptops with a DVD drive in them. And there are a lot of customization options, more than I have ever seen from any other manufacturer. So let's take a look at that. So of course you can change the specs with the CPU, RAM, storage, or the GPU and applicable, but you can also add your own logo on the lid of the laptop. You can change the boot logo if you want. My review unit apparently got my channel's logo. You can engrave the palm rest with whatever you want and pick the font. You can pick between Windows and Linux with Ubuntu, Mint, Cubes OS, Pop OS, Kubuntu, Xubuntu, Fedora, Elementary OS, or even something else that you can specify. And you can even ask them to pre-configure certain options inside of the OS that they pre-install. They can set up your user account already. They can create separate partitions if you prefer. They can turn on disk encryption, give you a USB drive to reinstall, pick a specific default browser for you. You can choose to use your own keyboard layout in ANSI or ISO. You can change the look of the super key with a custom logo. You can change keyboard illumination colors. You can ask to completely remove the mic and webcam. Basically, all aspects of the device that could be changed, you can change. And some people will not care about that, they'll just want a device that works right there and then as is. But for people who really like to completely tailor the entire experience with their hardware and their software, 
it's great. And now you might be thinking, this sounds eerily similar to what the Framework laptop is trying to do. So how does Nova Custom compare to Framework? So I never got a review unit for the Framework laptop, but I can still compare the specs, the prices, and the methodology. Both companies seem to aim at the same target, people who want to repair, upgrade, and extend the life of their laptops. And Framework goes further, since you can even replace the entire motherboard and keep the whole chassis, keyboard, panel, webcam, and ports. They don't have as many models and sizes though, and until the 16-inch model releases, you're not getting any dedicated GPU options and you're limited to 13 inches. I'd say Nova Custom is more about customization and making sure that you get the exact device that you want and that you'll be able to keep it working, upgrade it or repair it as time goes on, where Framework really wants to go all in on the repairability and upgradability of the device without offering too many models, but making sure that you can keep the parts that you don't need to change. In terms of price range, Framework will be a little bit more expensive expensive than Nova Custom for the same configurations, but they do have better displays and newer CPU options, plus Ryzen options that Nova Custom doesn't currently offer. On the other hand, Nova Custom has more customization options for your devices, your keyboard, the pre-installed operating systems, they use open source firmware and core boot, they officially support Linux, and you will get to have more ports at the same time on the device since the current Framework 13 is limited to four ports at one given moment. Well, five if you count the audio jack. So I'd say they both have their advantages, and if you enjoy the approach that Framework has, I'd say Nova Custom can be a very good choice if the Framework laptop just doesn't fit your needs, whether it's keyboard layouts, display sizes, configuration options, Nova Custom will let you change those things. But if all this customization is applied to a mediocre device, then it kind of doesn't matter. So let's look at the review unit that they sent me. So this one is the NS51 series. So it's basically their mid-range laptop. The bottom is aluminium. The rest looks like the same magnesium alloy used by Slimbook or Tuxedo. And just like these manufacturers, this is a Clevo or Tongfeng design that they customize to your needs. Apart from Star Labs and Purism, all Linux manufacturers use ODMs to provide the base chassis for their laptops. In terms of build quality, it feels very rigid. The hinge is super solid, maybe too much since you can't open it with one hand, which before you ask what the big deal is, it's for accessibility. If you only have one hand, you can't open this easily. The whole thing is pretty heavy, 1.7 kilos, and it's quite sturdy, although it has the same give in the middle of the keyboard as a lot of laptops, low-end or high-end. And I'm not a huge fan of the look of this device, and I think it's due to the keyboard, the dual-tone look, and the font they use, but generally the form factor, I'm not in love with it. Now, apart from looks, which is very subjective, the only real issue I can see is the position of the power button on the right next to a USB port. So you're very likely to press it unintentionally when you're trying to insert a USB drive. And of course, you can open the laptop to replace the battery, the SSD, and the RAM. And all the spare parts are accessible for up to seven years after your purchase, and they will give you a complete service manual with all the schematics, the disassembly guide, and procedures to replace any component you want. And it's really nice to see that. It's all open and transparent. You immediately know what you can or can't do with your hardware. It's great. But what's inside this thing though? So this specific model came with a Core i7-1260P, which is the highest option you can get with that model. It came with 16 gigs of RAM, 500 gigs of SSD, and Linux Mint pre-installed, although it was Mint 21, not 21.1 for some reason. The base CPU you can get this model with is a 1240p, which is slightly slower than the 1260, 4 gigs of RAM by default, and 250 gigs of SSD as well. With that, you get Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. You also get a 1080p panel at 16x9, and all of their laptops are 16x9. Unfortunately, there are no 16x10 options. And that base model with the 1240p Intel CPU and 4 gigs of RAM will cost 1100 euros, VAT included, which is a bit steep for 4 gigs of RAM. I mean, at least 8 or 16 would justify the cost, but for 4 gigs, 1100 euros feels a bit much. 
Now, in terms of I.O., on the right, you get Gigabit Ethernet, the ill-placed power button, one USB 2 port, a micro SD card reader, and on the right, you have your barrel charger, an HDMI port, a USB 3.0 port, and one Thunderbolt 4 and one Type-C 3.1 Gen 2 port. And you can charge the laptop using USB-C. And it's not an amazing selection of ports on this specific device either. Like micro SD, it's not super useful. And USB 2, why? Now this laptop came with Core Boot, as all Nova custom devices do, with Dasharo firmware. So you know your boot experience is completely open source and safe. In terms of performance, the CPU gets a more than honorable 2498 in single core on Geekbench, pretty high, and 7450 in multi-core. The 1260p might be a laptop chip, but it's still a 12-core i7, and it definitely delivers pretty great performance for day-to-day -day tasks. In terms of gaming, of course that's not the purpose of this device, but I still ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, and at 720p, with all the details turned to the minimum, it only reaches 25 to 30 FPS. Important to note, this is on the pre-installed Linux Mint 21, not 21.1 or 21.2. It's a pretty old distro with a pretty old base, and I am pretty sure that the performance of the CPU and of the Intel XE graphics would be higher with something that has a newer kernel. As per battery life, this chip is relatively power efficient, and since the display is 1080p60, you will not be wasting much energy either, so it lasts for about 7 hours at mid-brightness, Wi-Fi on, watching YouTube videos in a loop. That is definitely enough for a full day of real work, as in not watching YouTube videos. Although if you know of a job where you only watch YouTube videos, let me know, I want to sign up. Now let's look at the various things this laptop comes with. The display is 15.6 inches, 1080p, 16 by 9, 300 nits of brightness. It has good viewing angles, good color accuracy, it covers 98% of sRGB, it's a solid panel. It has an anti-glare coating, it's nothing special, but it gets the job done. As per input, while I don't really like how the keyboard looks, it does feel pretty good to type on. The keys have good treble, they bounce back well, it doesn't feel mushy for a membrane keyboard, and it sounds pretty good, it's a good keyboard. The touchpad is decent. It doesn't feel like glass, but it's smooth enough, the size is okay, and it feels precise. It did wobble a little bit, and you can feel that when just using tab to click. Now, the webcam is the usual potato quality fare. It's 720p, it's grainy, it has poor low light performance, and it doesn't really do any form of processing to make the image better. It's the usual. The microphone is the same. It will be suitable for short video conferences, but it makes you sound distant, and there is virtually no range on the audio. It sounds compressed a lot. If you spend your days on video calls, you will need an external microphone. So, yeah, you won't be recording your podcast on the history of wine and cheese pairings on this thing. Although, if you want somebody to talk about this, I'm here. And finally, the speakers. They're your average fare. You can definitely watch a video, a movie, a TV show on it, or even listen to music, but it won't make your neighbors knock on your door. The sound is average, not too loud, not too much bass, but it doesn't peak or make the chassis vibrate. Now, this specific laptop I would not have bought for myself. I favor bigger models, a little bit higher end, and I need a dedicated GPU for my work. But this specific laptop doesn't matter in the end. It's just one example of what Nova Custom does or can do. And it's a fine example. It works as intended. What matters here is the company and the purpose. They push things even further than most Linux manufacturers, with way more configuration options and customization from the engraving, the keyboard layout, the pre-installed options and features. You decide exactly what your laptop looks like. And then there's the repairability, with the ability to upgrade your device, to buy spare parts for up to seven years, to open it and modify it, the service manual, the three years of warranty. There's Coreboot pre-installed, there's the fact they run on renewable energy only at their headquarters, there's the included shipping and import duty, so no hidden costs. So Nova Custom looks like a very ethical company that just wants their users and customers to actually own the hardware that they bought in every single possible way. If that's appealing to you, then you're probably ready to pay the premium, because their devices are not cheap. 
And if that's not something you're looking for, then there are probably cheaper alternatives that will fit your needs as well. So, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, and to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, there's that thumbs down button as well, and you can tell me why in the comments at the same time. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links in the description to let you do just that. From LibraPay, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube memberships, YouTube thanks, you know how this works, so all the links are down there. So thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!